House Minority Leader uh, Nancy Pelosi started out, started out the week by calling John Conyers, Congressman Conyers, an icon who is who deserved due process. Ruth, why the sudden change? You think? Well, it's an interesting question of what she, what did she know, and when did she know it? Why didn't she know it on Sunday if she's capable of knowing it now? A few more sort of drips and drabs have come out publicly. But I, I find myself torn a little bit because I'm a really big believer in due process and especially when there is a process to have. In Congress as opposed to in the media, there is an ethics committee process. There is a way to go through these things and get some closure. At the same time, that's a very lengthy process and I think the public mood isn't really very um, amenable to putting up with that process, especially when there is a set of credible allegations. We have to talk about a person who hits a little close to home, and that's Garrison Keillor. I have to read a note from editorial page editor Fred Hyatt. He writes, Garrison Keillor has been a contributing writer to the Washington Post's news service and syndicate and wrote a column defending Senator Al Franken without any disclosure of his, his own situation. He owed his readers either not to write about this while he was under investigation or to tell them he was under investigation. We do not intend to publish his columns in the future. And you know, um, from Garrison Keillor to Matt Lauer to Congressman Conyers, um, this whole situation has led to something um, that really struck with you, Joanne. It was something that Savannah Guthrie said on Monday in reaction national to- national reckoning. I'm glad to see that organizations are finally, maybe belatedly, coming to that reckoning, NBC. Um, I mean, the Post, I, I, I think that what uh, Mr. Hyatt is saying had more to do with journalistic integrity and the fact that he broke a trust with, with readers. Um, uh, so that's, that's concerning. But why isn't Congress doing it? Why isn't Congress c reckoning with, with it? When you have companies, the Washington Post, NBC News, CBS, others, the Weinstein Company, you can act pretty definitively. You can say, hey, you were our employee, you're out of here. The capacity of Congress to act is a little more complicated. John Conyers was elected. Um, the, the boss of him is really the voters. The boss of him is kind of, but not really, Nancy Pelosi and his colleagues. They can influence him, they can hope he'll do the right thing, but they can't lean on him in quite the same way. There's also, as I was saying before, an, a very cumbersome, probably not quite up to the task ethics process in Congress. And w what I'm saying here is not to argue that Congress has handled these things well in the past. Mm -hmm. One of the most astonishing things that we've learned as we've had this reckoning, as Joanne says, is about the completely inadequate process for handling and certainly disclosing sexual harassment claims. Um, you know, you have to, if you are a woman in Congress, bring a sexual harassment claim. You have to go through the most ridiculous set of hoops that you would have to be crazy, really, to do it. Um, that needs to be fixed. But in terms of the slowness of reaction, I think probably the nature of the institutions, and there's something to be said for voters get their say, mm -hmm. and they get their say in two years, also plays a little bit of a role here in explaining the difference. And